This video is brought to you by Quinn. Say hi, Quinn. She's going to be joining me today. So I recently had a question uh, come in from somebody. They asked me what the difference was when you are going from something like a family restaurant or a bar and grill and move into something that's a little more upscale. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. For starters, I'm not a Michelin star chef. So I've never claimed to be. I don't know anything about working at like a three star Michelin restaurant. And uh, I wish that I was able to have an experience like that because I love learning and I love learning new things. When I talk about more upscale things like, you know, sea scallops, beef wellington, six, eight ounce filet, you know, uh, nicer plating. That's really what the video is going to focus on. So for starters, when you are working in like a bar and grill atmosphere or like a family restaurant, number one thing that you'll notice, there's a lot more utilization of a microwave and prepping is a little bit different a lot more things come in uh like bought in like prepackaged uh, rop fish for example things come in frozen prepackaged sometimes even pre-seasoned uh, family restaurants you're more likely to get things like bagged hollandaise sauce prepping for hollandaise might include grabbing the bagged hollandaise and portioning it out into portioning cups and then microwaving them for like 20 seconds to pour on you know, eggs Benedict or whatever. A lot more breakfast items are available. Usually, uh, sometimes they're 24 hours. If you're working at a more upscale place, you're not gonna prep out hollandaise sauce, right? You don't you don't prep it out and hold it somewhere. You make it to order or you make small batches because it doesn't keep like super well. I was able to successfully hold hollandaise when I had a catering. It was like a smoked salmon, eggs Benedict thing and made the hollandaise from scratch and it went into one of these things. They're pretty badass, and I highly recommend if you ever do it. The family restaurant that I worked at didn't give any formal training on how to do things like poached eggs. There wasn't actually even the means to do it. They had a flat top, a broiler, a microwave, and a fryer, and that was it. That was all they had. So if somebody ordered an Eggs Benedict, the only way to do it would be to heat a pan up on the, st on the flat top and hope it got up to temp in time using hot water, or microwave, honestly microwaving it, put it like dropping the egg in there with like a pickle slice and fucking microwaving poached eggs. It was the stupidest shit ever. Something I actually totally forgot when they had eggs Benedict on the menu, they actually used basted eggs and they were about basted soft, basted medium. They didn't even use poached eggs in this family restaurant. I don't understand why they would even allow guests to order poached eggs if we didn't have the means to do it correctly. So when, but when I'm starting out as a grave cook and you know, I'm whatever, 22, 23 years old, I know it was 2008. I didn't, at the time I didn't know what a poached egg was. When you learn it a certain way, even if it's the incorrect way, you hold on to that information until it changes. You hold on to that information until you get corrected essentially. It wasn't until this dude Richard that was an executive chef for a really nice hotel. He was retired, started working part-time at this uh, family restaurant as a baker, which in included things like pulling out pies and making meringue from powder. And it was just, but it, I mean, he, it, he was retired. So for him, it was a great part-time gig, you know. He gave me a book called On Cooking that he got from CIA. And that's where I found out that poached eggs aren't made like that at all, you know. So there is a night and day difference. It, bar and grill, family style, the, the market segment that they're looking for are people that come in, they want to watch sports, they want to hang out, they want to hook up. You know, family restaurants, they're coming in with their family. They want to eat out somewhere where they're not going to get dirty looks for bringing their kids, somewhere with a kid's menu that's going to have things like you know, chicken tenders, burgers, and stuff like that. And the and the regulars, regulars will come in early in the morning, drink coffee, have breakfast. Usually it's the same thing. When you work at one of these places, the cooks start to recognize guests by things that are ordered. And most of the time, years later, you'll still be able to recall it. I had one regular that came in all the time. He always ordered the same thing. And it was like coffee, one egg. Sometimes he'd want it scrambled, sometimes over medium and one sausage patty and hash browns that were barely even cooked, like just basically warmed up hash browns. And he would order that every single time. Now, sometimes he would get a little crazy and order like a piece of toast or something, but every morning reliably at like 4, 4.30, he was there, boom, boom, boom. You do not get this at an upscale dining place. Upscale dining, people come out for anniversaries, birthdays. They want an experience, right? Family dining, they know what they're signing up for. They 
They just want to come in. They want to eat. They sometimes they most of the time they want to just be left alone. They want to order something that they order all the time. They want consistency in their menu. You know, every now and then they'll order a special upscale place. They want to be treated special. They come in. They want when they walk in. They want the lighting to look nice. They want to be greeted promptly. They want to be sat. They want to be like taken care of because in their mind, it's like, well, I came here. I only come here once a year or I come here like once every three months or whatever. And I blow $250 on like two people. Right. So if I'm going to go spend $250, I'm not just going there to eat food. Right. That's that's the mindset. I'm not just going there to eat food. I'm going there for an experience. I want to be treated like. Uh, you know, I'm the greatest thing in the world or whatever. whatever. It varies. Sometimes you will get a quality of staff. The, there might be an increase in quality of staff. Usually when people get jobs that are minimum wage, uh, minimum wage busing, dishwashers, and um, cooks that are not paid very much. Like there's still places around that are ha- hiring cooks at like 10, 50, 11 bucks an hour. You are going to hire somebody and pay them $10 and 50 cents an hour in 2023. You're going to get $10 and 50 cents an hour of worth of work adjusted for inflation. And it's going to be garbage, right? And I don't think people should go above and beyond what their job description is in general. Like I've, I've, I've made whole videos all about this. Yeah, you'll notice, uh, I mean, there's so many things that that is different. It it, it is almost like night and day different from a bar and grill setting to something like an upscale restaurant. Staff turnover, one example of that. Uh, Usually you have a higher staff turnover. At a bar and grill setting, you might end up with a kitchen manager that worked their way up at the bar and grill or they don't have a tremendous amount of experience, but they know enough to know the menu. They know how to train staff and, you know, they can do basic things like inventory and whatever. When you go into these more upscale places, you tend to find that to get the job requires a lot more experience. They Most of the time they want previous manager experience. They want people that have a degree of some kind in a lot of cases and uh, the experience that they want. They want quality established experience. Like if you're a kitchen manager at a bar and grill and you go and apply as a, to be an executive chef at, you know, uh, Le Grill or whatever, um, they would pick somebody with a college degree in fine dining experience over somebody that has 20 years of experience as a kitchen manager of a bar and grill. As far as toxicity goes, it transcends bar and grill versus family restaurant versus fine dining or whatever. The toxicity level is based off of who is running the kitchen, who's running the show, not the quality of the food or anything else. There are plenty of restaurants that specialize in upscale dining that are horrible, toxic places to work at. Should you go from a bar and grill setting to something more upscale? My answer is it depends. If you already, if you plan on doing this like a, uh, for a career, like I am, like I recommend getting any experience you can, anywhere you can. Always go up and pay. Always look for something better. I say put your career ahead of anywhere that you're working. I'm not saying that the day that you get another job, just peace out, you know, and fucking leave. You know, be respectful. Give your notice, stuff like that. Uh, You want to be able to use them on a reference later on with some caveats to that, which I can explain in a different video. When it comes to your career, you have to look out for yourself. You can't let the feelings of other people that you work with or you know you're gonna put the assistant manager in a bind by putting in your notice so you can go work for you know a a tv celebrity chef for example and the thing is is if your manager is good if if they are good quality management they will support your career advancement if i were to leave right now for example where i work currently at this rocket test place if i were to tell them tomorrow hey I found a job, there's a Michelin star restaurant in this city and I'm gonna move there and I'm gonna go work under the chef. They'd be like, that's badass, dude. What's the time frame look like? You know, uh, who is it? And you know, they would be asking questions and being supportive of it. Like, I know that, I know that about these people. They are they are good people. But there's some management that they, they hear that and then they fire you that same day. And they just, they don't put up with it. And those are bad managers. And actually, if you want more information on bad managers, I did a video about that. It should be popping up right about now. You can check that out if you want. As far as me saying it depends, Marco Pierre White, celebrity chef, Michelin star, world renowned, has books. He runs a, he runs a, a gastropub now. It's just comfort food. 
basic stuff that's a little elevated. It's not just a greasy burger, but it's it's a decent burger, but it's not like an $80 burger. And he does this because he wants the connection with the people. He he wants he wants Bob to come in every day at noon and order the same thing and be able to talk to him and chit chat. You know, he wants that experience and that feeling. So it's working at a bar and grill isn't isn't degrading or demeaning. The only thing that's ever degrading or demeaning about working in a restaurant, there are some restaurants where you don't even want to show your face as a cook. You, like you don't want to you don't want to go out there. You're you're disappointed in the place. It's always dirty. There's always complaints. You know, the servers don't know what they're doing. Half the staff is high. You know, like you, you run into these kind of situations, right? But at the same time, you got to work. Like you can't just not work. So it's like, what do you do? This video was more off the cuff. I just wanted to get on and talk about that a little bit based off the question that I got. If you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. I do have a shop that's got hoodies and t-shirts and stuff in there. I have some new designs that I just made and I'm always adding new stuff. Check that out if you'd like to. If you want to support me in a way that's free, uh, subscribe is always lovely. I appreciate them. Every single one that I get, I'm up to 1800 subs. Thanks to you guys. Totally badass. about to hit 2000. Let me know what your personal experience is. If you've switched from a bar and grill setting to something more upscale or gone from upscale dining back down. Did you, did you like going down? Um, uh, I don't say down. You say upscale, so you think like up, up, and then anything else is down, but that's not really how it is. Have you gone from something more upscale to something more like a barn grill or family restaurant? Is it something that you like? Are you, uh, you know, like, what's your story? Are you trying to wind down? You know, like sometimes people, they, they get their experience in, they put in their hours, and then they go down to something that's a little more relaxing or feels a little bit more easy because it's a, it's a quality of life thing over a money thing. Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, you guys have an awesome, amazing day, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.